Welcome to your guide on implementing wayfinding with the Mapton Web SDK. Effective wayfinding is crucial for helping your users navigate complex spaces easily and efficiently. Today, we'll learn the process of setting up custom wayfinding on your digital maps. Let's get started. If you want to follow along, we are using the school demo map, which you can find on our trial keys and maps page. Now let's take a look at our starting map. And I've already gone ahead and added two space labels, which is the cafeteria and gymnasium, and as well added some hover effect so we can identify our clickable spaces on our maps easier. Let me show you the starting code base for that. So over here, we've enabled interactivity and hover color orange for our spaces. And as well, we have two variables over here, one called first space, which is assigned the cafeteria space object. Same thing over here for second space, it is assigned the gymnasium space object. And lastly, adding labels onto our map, we have mapview.labels.add, which take in both the first space and the second space and appending those location labels into our map. Cool. So first step is to draw a path. There are two ways that you could do this, one using navigation.draw and the other one using path.add, which I will show you how to do both in our demo today. Before we dive in, let's go to the docs under map view. And as you can see, map view has a method called get directions. Get directions takes a start and an endpoint. And just another level deeper, if you look at directions, it encompasses coordinates, distance, and instructions, if you ever needed that information. We will be using directions.coordinates for using paths. All right, so let's jump in. And first is to make a condition statement to check if our spaces exist. So I'm going to use an if, uh, if first space, double and second space. If those are legitimate spaces, we can now declare our direction. So with our direction, I'm going to have a variable called directions and simply we call map view dot get directions and we will feed in the first point, which is first space and second space as our second as our destination. Nice. Okay, so next we have to draw our direction on our map and we are going to use navigation for this. So let me show you what navigation looks like over here on our docs. And navigation has properties that we can call it like draw, which takes in a directions object plus additional options. So we do have that directions object. So let me show you how to use it like so. Um, all right. So first we need to check if directions is available. So if statement for our directions, open that up. And now um, we could use map view dot navigation dot draw. And all we need to do is feed in those directions as our argument, give that a save. And just like that, let's take a look at our map. And as you can see, we have a path and a navigation path right here. At the beginning, we have a little person icon and our endpoint has a little flag. Cute. Okay, let me show you how to do the same thing with paths. Um, so let me show you the interface paths over here. And you'll see that path has an add method that takes in coordinates and additional options for customization. So. Let me comment out this last line, this navigation draw line, and now let's do paths. So we're going to do map view dot paths dot add. And for our directions, we are going to call directions dot coordinates. Cool. Give that a save. Head over to our map again. And there you go. As you can see, we do have a new path drawing from cafeteria to gymnasium. You'll also notice that it's a little bit thick, making it hard to see. It's kind of overlapping some rooms. Um, so let me show you how to customize that. So it's a little bit skinnier, so it looks much more neater in our map. So going back over here, we're just going to add some additional options. Um, so our options I'm going to add is near radius, which is I'm signing 0.5. Same thing for the far radius. 0.5, save that. So this is the radius of our path. Going back really quickly, you'll see 
now that our path is much skinnier and it's more noticeable on our map for our users. All right, so now that we know how to draw our paths, let's add some dynamic interaction to it. So now let's make the starting location of where the user first clicks on our map and our end location would be the second click and drawing a path connecting those two locations. So first, before we start, let's declare two variables. I'm going to call the first one start space um, and it is a space type or it is null and we're initially going to define it as null because we don't have a value for it quite yet and the second one being path which is a path type or again null and initially defining it as null cool now let's jump in with our click event map view dot on and click we have our event open that up great so first is to check if our start space doesn't already have a value. So that's if exclamation mark start space. And if it doesn't have a value, let's assign it a value. So start space equals event dot spaces zero, which is the first in our spaces index. And that will assign the first click as our start space. Nice. So for our second click, we should check if the path exists and that our click is also a space so we're going to add an else if and we are going to do exclamation mark path to check if it's not already defined and event spaces zero to see if our second click is a real space and let's declare our directions simply with const directions and map view we're going to call get directions like before and we're going to feed it start space space oops and our second one being event spaces amazing great now let's get them to draw together so we're going to check first if um, directions is a directions object um, and if it is not a legit directions, we will return out of our click function. So simply return. Otherwise, we'll move forward and draw our path. So copying what I already did above over here. So map view path dot add directions coordinates. Let me copy that over here. Just paste that here and comment that really quickly. Cool. So. That should work. Let's go ahead and uh, check out our map. And I'm gonna click two spaces. So let's go again, click from cafeteria to gymnasium. And as you can see, our path is available there. I could do another refresh. Let me refresh that really quickly. Let's try another one. So over here from our top left and all the way here to the bottom corner, you can see that our path is perfectly drawn and goes through the auditorium into our classroom there. And voila, wayfinding is easy as that. Hope that was helpful and thanks for watching. For more detailed guides, you can visit the Mapton Developer Portal or our playground to continue enhancing your map experience for your users. Happy mapping!